And unfortunately, we're watching the Florida situation and not exactly sure where it will come on shore, but certainly some significant impacts from Ian expected there later this week. We on the other side of the system are going to be, it looks like, well removed from any tropical impacts. So here we are talking about fall weather and unfortunately still watching what's happening over in Florida. But this is not a storm that's coming anywhere near us. In fact, we are just looking at 89 degrees for today's high and then we get a nice cool front that will almost be reinforced by north winds around Ian later in the week. I'll show you in a second. Temperatures right now, though, still pretty hot and humid after a hot, summery kind of feeling weekend. Live radar is pretty quiet. There is a chance for a couple of stray showers or storms today as this front moves in and we're not going to feel big effects today. Although humidity will drop a little bit by the end of the day, it will be more so tomorrow that we get the drier air moving in. And then as Ian again moves into somewhere along the western coast of Florida at the end of the week, we continue with these north winds, just making it feel low humidity, lots of sun, making it feel like fall for the next several days. Today, though, highs about 91, slight chance for a shower or storm. This is our evening forecast, and by then we might actually begin to feel from north to south a little bit of a drop in humidity, tiny bit of a north breeze perhaps, and then overnight tonight, look at this, north shore lows, upper 50s to about 60. If you're south of the lake, temperatures will likely bottom out in the upper 60s for early tomorrow. A little bit of a north breeze will be increasing. We'll have lower humidity, and yes, of course, our cooler temperatures not only for the afternoons, in the coming days, for example, tomorrow, just lower 80s with lots of sun and low humidity, but especially in the mornings when we'll wake up to 50s north and 60s south of the lake. I think Thursday we may even stay in the 70s to about 80 degrees for the high, so should feel really nice for us. We are still tracking Ian, of course, for Cuba, the Cayman Islands right now, and eventually Florida. So you can see it's a category one storm, a lot better structure starting to see that very familiar hurricane look with those storms clustered around the center and uh, an inner core beginning to develop, which will allow it to tap in to the energy from the warm waters, low wind shear environment here, possibly rapidly strengthen over the next several days. Might be a major hurricane for the western tip of Cuba late tonight and into tomorrow on Tuesday. And then this is the time. Wednesday evening into Thursday and Friday that Florida is going to be getting some significant impacts, including rain, especially surge, because again, on the uh, right hand or eastern side of the system, there are going to be rain bands continuing to move in and then also eventually weakening as it moves inland. But the steering pattern is this. We're still seeing it take that turn to the northwest and eventually north. It's being drawn by this trough of low pressure, which will kind of bring it out to the north, and it's also rounding this high pressure area. Now, this is through Thursday, and you can see why we're expecting that turn to the northeast instead of anywhere near the Louisiana or the western side of the Gulf of Mexico. But then look what happens. The trough pulls away, and as it does that, the steering pattern is not going to be as strong. The steering current's not as strong. That's why we're expecting it to slow down, not expecting it to shift to the west. The models are pretty tightly clustered off to the east, but we are expecting it to slow down, eventually weaken with some southwesterly shear, so it may not be a major hurricane when it actually makes landfall, but it will be, it looks like, a very strong, maybe major hurricane very close to the coast by again the end of the week. Here are the cluster of the models now, again, shifting a little bit farther to the east after over the weekend, it did shift a tiny bit to the west, but now looking like certainly a Florida uh, storm. Unfortunately for those in Florida around Tampa and farther south toward the tip of Florida, the Key West, you can see all of the hurricane and tropical storm watches and warnings in effect. A lot of storm surge, unfortunately possible. This is the potential storm surge peak and you can see for Tampa might be close to well, several feet, maybe five to 10 feet in some spots at the end of the week. Rainfall potential anywhere oranges to yellows. That's anywhere from about four or five to seven to 10 or so inches of rain. Some of the heaviest might stay just off the coast, but again, this is still a couple days out, so we will continue to refine the forecast for those in Florida. But unfortunately, certainly something that the western coast of Florida around the Tampa area and other spots nearby are going to have to pay really close attention to. And you saw already um, very wisely getting prepared over there. For us, this is our forecast. North shore lows in the 50s, south shore in the 60s. Now our only impact really, if you want to call it that, 
will be winds. It'll be windy tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday as those north winds come in around Ian. That's about it should feel fantastic. If you are looking for a break in humidity, a taste of fall, we get it this week starting again, mostly tonight and tomorrow and then lasting all the way into the weekend. Do for it. Well, later today, the Louisiana Department of Insurance will meet with folks on the North Shore to answer questions about their policies and where to get coverage if they've been.